All right. Welcome to Astronaut Survival Training 101. You find yourself crash landed on a planet. You need to determine the gravity field strength in that planet on that planet's surface. What do you do? I want you to check one, two. Let's step away from the computer. How's that audio is going? Go still. <clears throat> All right. So what you would do is you would mark off some heights. This is one way to do it. Okay. So we've got three meters of vertical distance that we've measured. So the top of that ruler there is three meters above the floor, which is out of the frame here. And we're going to rely on our sort of uh, astronaut colleagues here to time how long it takes the object to fall. So our independent variable for this experiment is the height. So the height, so we mentioned the meters, and we're going to time it in seconds, the calculators to square those times. Okay, we want to have time squared in our data table because we're going to ultimately generate a plot of this quantity against this quantity. So these are going to be our coordinates, you know, x and, no, x and y. We're going to plot t squared on that. Um, and I'm going to try to do my best to collect my own data here. I want to see if we can corroborate those claims. Stopwatch. Go ahead and take it out now. I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. Okay. Um, so three meters, and we, we did kind of a qualitative test on this yesterday the other day. Um, it's going to take less than a second. So on Earth, you kind of you know it got to be five meters up for, for something to fall for one second, and this is only three meters. Like we got two full meters higher, you can get one second. So the time data is going to be sort of what's uh, what's going to be tricky about this lab here. So we'll, you know, we got to retest it and say, like, well, wait a minute, this one was higher than that one. It should have been less. You know, like we'll, we'll recheck it. You know, maybe we got to retest other points. Oh no. Problem. It's designed specifically for this purpose for astronaut survival training. But it's a real big roll that under your get hurt. Yeah, but I mean it is it's uh, specially designed. So once you're standing on it, there's a little spring that, that locks down the legs of the slide. It's not rolling anymore. Thank you for your concern. If I fall off of this, it's on purpose. Okay? And you're dismissed. Just leave me. All right, put the ball here. YouTube, you ready? Three, two, one. I got all zeros in the stopwatch. <laughs> Did anybody get anything besides that? 
five five and make one. I press my two eight. Yeah, and then that's okay. Be honest, it's like if we get three or four of us that are kind of you know all close, we go with that. I'm gonna do a little start. Ah, like. This is the sign. It's just for show. This is the one that just stays up here for show. Oh yeah. This is the one. Yeah. Start, stop, reset, everybody. Make sure that you got a good stopwatch ready. All right. All right. So, future generations of students doing this lab can maybe use actual footage from the time signature to get much more accurate time data. And maybe they'll get really good conclusions for G here. So, from three meters, three. Two, one. I got point six four. Point six four. All right. Point six three. I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. What do you got? Point what? Point six. Point six zero. So from a height of three point zero meters, that's not thirty. Three point zero meters. The time. I'm going to go with the mode just to reinforce some academic language, some math vocabulary. The mode, that's the most occurring data point, right? So that was just so happens to be one of my stopwatch points explore. Also, Mario 64. <laughs> Mario 64. I don't know, we're going to get copyright. I don't know, I'm fine. All right, there's a point in front of that six four also, right? Like you said, everything's less than one second, and it's only gonna get worse from here, right? It's like the best one. Everybody with the calculator knows that point six four squared has a certain value, but I I can do it in my head. Point four zero nine six. Right. And uh, what we want to have is consistency in the data table, so like two digits here. Two decimal you know, points here, and then we'll all the way up to four for this one. We're not going to be able to plot like to the 10,000th place. So when we go to plot this, it's like 0. 0.41 will probably be sufficient, like the 100 split, but we'll we'll deal with that when we go to graph. Okay. Start, stop, reset. We're going to 2.5. Not more. Uh, I should probably check that because you can get what's called a parallax error. A parallax error, like we've studied parallax in astronomy as our viewpoint of nearby stars relative to more distant stars changes at different times of the year because our perspective sort of changes. So your perspective looking at the ruler from this vantage point and looking sort of from above is different. You'll judge a different value. So you should always look, you should always read an instrument perpendicular to it. So like you should be reading uh, in chemistry, sometimes you're working on a lab inch down here and you're like, oh, that's 50 milliliters. You need to hold the graduate cylinder up or bring your eye level down even better to a level surface and see where the bottom of the meniscus, right? And, and, and be reading on the eye level. You know, that's the more accurate data that goes in, the more accurate conclusions sort of come out. So. At high level, okay, 50 centimeters mark right here. So this would be 2.5 um, meters like this. You try my high level in it. This is kind of fun. So, so from 2.5 meters, three, two, one. I got 0.63. So now it's kind of like this is all we're measuring our human reaction time. So how quickly we can start and stop. It's so quick, right? Right, yeah. At least it was less. It should be less, right? Three. Three, two, 
Two meters. About all of my meters. Timer's ready. Three, two, one. Point five seven. All right, so let's just say, let's go to that. 2, 0.45. 0.45 squared. 0.25. All right, we've got quick reaction time here for a one and a half meter drop. How long does it take something to fall? One and a half meters on Earth. Three, two, one, point four, one. Oh, point three, two. Uh, three, two. I like that even better. You got two eight. Point two eight, point three two, point three up. We'll average it. Point three times three is nine, so it's like point oh nine. Point oh nine, yeah. And then I'm going to put these zeros here because it's a consistent piece of okay. One meter up. I anticipated this lab earlier in the year. I was like, all right, right there. We'll be our counterpoint. One meter up. Three, two, one. Sorry. Oh, shit. Start, stop, reset. I want to make sure we're doing this as soon as we can. It's like you really dropped the ball on that one. No? Okay. Let's grab this one. Three, two, one. Point three, nine. Yeah, point two, eight. Point two, three. We'll go with the mode on that one. Plus, that's my favorite number. That's why I like this square time up here. That was 1.0 meters. Remember, we said we'll, we'll entertain zero, you know, as, as a data point. Um, so we got 0.23 squared is 0.0529. One more from 0 0.5 meters, 50 centimeters. Last one. Unless you guys want to try to get like a 10 centimeter. 50 centimeters, half a meter. Three, two, one. Yay. I got point one five. I got point one six. I got point one two. I'm impressed that anyone can even hit the buttons that quickly. Okay, that's pretty good. Point five, point uh, we got what, point one five, point one three around there. 
the key is that these numbers should decrease. And maybe there's like that's too big of a jump there, you know. Um, but we will establish a trend, like as the numbers get bigger on our y-axis, these numbers are getting bigger also on the x-axis. So there will be a trend line. That's the whole sort of um, fundamental to the analysis. We've got to be able to draw a trend line through for our data points. And then I'm I'm honestly very curious to see how accurate our conclusions are going to be for this. And we've got enough people doing this that everyone will sort of judge a slightly different trend line. Okay, so once you plot the data, you're going to be looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, if you want this one, seven data points, the origin can count. Okay. Um, You're going to have seven data points, and there will be a trend sort of, you know, in that data, right? Like they're, they're all going to sort of climb upwards as a positive correlation. But you'll have to sort of judge where that trend is. You commit to a single line. So use a ruler when you go to draw a line. Don't connect the dots because then you've got seven lines, right? You've got lines that are connected to each data point. So it's okay, like I show on the chalkboard over here, you know, the data points sort of scatter about the best hit line. That's, that's sort of usually the case. And usually there's more than just seven data points that you're plotting, you know, sort of data that you collect in a science experiment. So this is a quick recap. You're gonna plot these numbers from zero to three on this axis. And so choose a nice scale where maybe every square is 0.25. You need to choose a small enough scale that the data is spread out over most of the page. So remember, you're going to construct axes. And I'm going to show this on the document camera in just a moment. You're going to construct the axes such that you're spreading the data out over most of the page. You can't just say, okay, well, three, I'll just do, you know, one, two, three squares. There's all my data. So your graph is just small. Okay, we really need to spread the data out. So maybe instead of one, each square is 0.1, right? Then it's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 .2, and you don't get to one until 10 squares up. So 30 squares to spread out, you know, this, if that's your scale. You kind of have to look at your graph paper and choose and then, you know it's really just trial and error it's kind of trying something out and seeing you know okay that's a good scale more than half of the page is the rule okay if you're less than half the page you can see it's like half the scale and it should, it should still fit these ones are trickier <laughs> from zero i would say like yeah we have zero so zero up to 0 0.41 something like that so let's go ahead and look at what's a reasonable scale the point is, once you've decided one, choose a nice, nice round numbers, even numbers, you know, or, or the only odd number you should use would be a five, like because it goes up by like 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, like, like quarters. That's that's okay, but no other odd scales. Like don't don't make it go by three or seven or nine or something like that. Even numbers, twos, fours, fives. Okay. Um, and we'll see, you know, based on sort of the variation of you know, where you all decide where the trend lines are in your own plots, um, what conclusions we get for G here. And it's okay if we're, you know, like, I, I, I'm sure we're going to be sort of off, you know, like 9.8, but like how far off are we going to be? Are we going to get like values that are too low, too high? Um, that's what I'm sort of curious about. How good of a job can this simple experiment do to, to like, within what percent of the true value will we be in? Your grade will be based on that. That's fair. So, like, if we're, let's say we know it's 9.8, let's just say 10 to make the math easy. Let's say we only calculate it to be five. Well, we're, we're within, like, we're, we're uh, what, 100% off, right? Because 100% of five is five. So, five doubles is 10. So, then we'd all get a zero. That's not good. Well, hopefully, we do better than that, right? Our grade depends on you guys. All right, so, now I'm going to go ahead and turn off this camera. When we go to the document camera, we're gonna we're gonna plot this here data. 
If you don't already have a sheet of graph paper and you wanted one, there's a pile back here. I'm gonna use just good old friendly graph paper, not the ace physics graph paper. It's really tough one. Oh, squares. So it makes, you know, you can't go wrong when it comes to finding some points to do your flow calculation. It's just squares are so small, you're going to find them. But that's never usually a problem even with graph paper. Now I think I can. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, by the way, the answer to tomorrow's pop quiz is sorry, I said at the same time I sharpened the pencil. You can't give us a pop quiz now. You just told us about it. You got me there. All right, like I said, give yourself lots of room for the graph, but you know, adequate space down there in the margins. The shame is when like, I didn't really count how many squares that is and what if I needed like well, just one more. Oh, well. All right, and so remember we're plotting, always label your axes because when I go to grade these, this is the first thing I looked at. Like, did they label the axes with the quantity and the units? And if you don't, it's like 10 points right there, 10 points right there. You grade down to an 80% just by not like writing a few simple things down. So, and I'll try to zoom in to show this here, right? So we're plotting time squared on the x-axis, even though it's the dependent variable. Typically we plot the independent variable on the x-axis, but there's no rule that says we have to. And the way that the equation works, it was just simpler to say y equals mx, h equals one half dt squared. So as long as we keep track of it, there's no rule that says we have to plot the independent variable. So we, we varied h, right? This was the independent variable, the height. We plotted it in meters. Uh, we're plotting it in meters. Um, and it was the independent variable. It's going on the y-axis. Let your eyes adjust. There we go. So make sure that those are labeled. So you got a good start here. So it's so worthwhile to take the time up front to like give yourself the time to set up your graph paper proper. And then the rest of it's easier than trying to like, you know, guess with it, fight with it. All right. It should be easier to maybe do the Y axis because it's already going up by like nice, you know, halves. So this down here is zero and we want three to be like somewhere up here. Then I kind of just get, judge I like, so like 1.5 would be around here or something like like one, 1 1.52. So I think that that scale that I mentioned earlier, 0.1 will probably work. So check that, you know, what we want to check is if, if I call this square 0.1, then everything is going up by that. So it's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That would be one right there. And I think this is going to work. So if that's one, then I go up another 10. So it'd be 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. I might as well label them while I'm going. So I'm pretty well just committed to this scale now. 2.3, 0 0.4, 0.5. So there's, I'm halfway. And if I doubled that, I'll be more than halfway, right? I could maybe have chosen a slightly smaller scale, like, like what's smaller than 0.1? Well, 0 0.05, you know, and then, and then it would be like, well, I might be off the charts there. So I feel like this is pretty good. So every square is 0.1. 
So this is 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1 1.7, 1.8, 1 1.9. So I'm going to label 2, 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 2.5 would be there. Um, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then there's my last data point, 3. And you can see that I'm more than halfway, so I'm good. Even though I'm going to have some dead space up here, that's maybe where I can do my working. Or I could extrapolate. I could say, you know, the top of the 37 balcony is five meters up. According to our data, we could extrapolate up to that and see what it should be there. We could sort of, again, this is the power of science is we can make a prediction. We could extrapolate the empirical data we've collected, which will be here, out to, you know, sort of conclusions that we didn't ever measure, but we could deduce what they are. Right, the x-axis is going to be tougher because we got to go from zero to like 0.41. So if this is zero and 0.4, we want to be like somewhere around here. Then uh, 0.2, like around here, so 0.1. So maybe, maybe a quarter or maybe 0.2. So if we did, I guess, 0.02. So it'd be 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0.08. Um, and then this would be 0.1. So it's like every five squares is 0.1. So it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 0.2, 1, 2, 3, 4.3, 1, 2, 3, 4.4. 4. Yeah, that's more than halfway. All right. So the scale that I've sort of decided on, and you can see, like, again, I just sort of I, I sort of say, well, where's my highest value? About halfway would be here. And I sort of just use my judgment about, well, what seems sort of reasonable? And then try one out and see if it gets you there. And if it doesn't, like, okay, I got to half it. I got to double it. I got to, but just stick with, again, nice round numbers, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.1, you know? So I chose 0.2. If every square, I'm sorry, 0 0.02. If every square is 0 0.02, you can kind of see like my first data point is actually 0 0.0225. Right, like that's my lowest number on this axis. So that's okay. So that's like, it sort of captures my, my lowest number. So 0 0.02, then it would be 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08. And then right here, this is going to be 0 0.1. 0 0.12, 0 0.14, 0 0.16, 0 0.18, 0 0.2, and that's about halfway. 0 0.22, 0 0.24, 0 0.26, 0 0.28, 0 0.3. The problem here is that like all my data is here, right? I have one data point that's 0.4 out here, but you see there's a big drop between 2.5 and 3. So you know, 0 0.32, 34, 36, 38, and then right here would be 0.4. And then let's have you know 0.42 because my last data point is like 0.41. So it's going to be kind of like right in between these two. And that's more than halfway. Okay, halfway is about here. So that's fine. All right, so we're good to go. All right, let's, uh, let's go in the reverse order that we collected the data. Zero, zero. Now I use small crosses for my data points rather than like a, a circle or a dot. We're going to use a, a small cross. So 0.5, okay, this is over to 0 0.0225. So if this is 0 0.02 and this is 0 0.04, that's going to be sort of very close to sort of this line. And so it's going to be kind of like just after that, right about there. So sort of. Here's where, we, you know, sort of our answers are going to diverge. We're using our judgment about where is 0.225 because we don't make a graph that's like scaled to our data points. We make a nice even scale and then we judge where our data points sort of fall within that. And the finer detail we can make this, you know, more accurately we can plot it. We can do it in a computer, right? Like an Excel spreadsheet will make very short work of this. So it's just past the 0.02, but it's exactly on the 0.5, right? Like that was the, the 50 centimeter one, all right? Now we go up to one meter, that's here. The X quantity was 0 0.0529. So if this is 0 0.04, that's 0 0.06. So it's right in between these would be 0 0.05. So it's kind of like right in between these two, 0 0.04 and 0 0.06. And I got to go all the way up to one here. So across right there. Okay. Two points down, 
I'm sorry, three points down, zero, zero. Okay, so three, four more to go. The X quantity, 0 0.09. So this is 0 0.08. 0 0.09 is exactly halfway between these two. All right. 0 0.09, we're going up to 1.5. So this one. Zoom out a bit, let your eyes adjust. Let them adjust. All right, so far, that's what we got. And say, so, yep, trend line. So we want. Go to 0 0.2025. So 0 0.2025 would be just after this 0 0.2, right? Not quite the 0 0.22. So just on the sort of outside of that, up to 2.0. So we go all the way up to here. And then this was like, what happened? It's like, the trend is, is sort of, it's like, well, I would draw like a curved line here. You know, it almost seems like it's curved, but we're not doing that. We're, we're sort of, no matter what, this is a linear relationship. We need a line. Not every trend is linear in the universe, um, but for well-established physics, so like we know it is. In fact, we, we forced this to be a line by plotting the square of the time. Like if we plot it just against time, then it would be a curved line. So by squaring this, it's like, how are you dealing with that? All right, we're going to go to 0.2336. So that's 0 0.22, 0 0.24. So it's kind of like here. And that's this one. And the scatter now, like if the trend line were somewhere like in here, that scatter is showing the uncertainties, right? Like it's, it's tough to sort of make these measurements. The last 1.4096 is just past 0.4. And that one goes all the way up to three here. So it's like about. All right, so that's what the data looks like. Not the cleanest, um, you know, trend, but definitely a trend. All right, and now here's where you could really see how our answers can vary widely. So I almost want to like, you know, like, okay, so I know the answer is 9.8, but what if I say the trend is like here, All right? Remember, the steepness of this line is going to give me bigger numbers, right? So it's like if I choose a really steep line and I get an answer that's like 11, I'm like, oh, I just should have made it a little bit shallower. I would have been perfect. So, you know, if you kind of know, like, well, if I knew this answer would give me five, then I, I know the answer should be 9.8. I'd make it a bit steeper. So hopefully that would like get me there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I really am going to use my, my judgment to choose like, what is the best line here? If you focus on these early data points, that looks pretty solid of, of a trend. Like it's going up like that, but then it's sort of ignoring these points that are below that's why a clear ruler is good too for this you kind of see like well if i if i commit to that trend line sort of ignoring these points it's sort of level off like that so if i want to get sort of like the trend in all the data i'm just commit to it whoops <laughs> ignore that part at the top my ruler kind of slipped all right let's see how there's like that All right, so I draw a single line. And I got at least one data point on there. Um, but these points are above, this point's below, this one's below. So I got you know about as many points above as below. That's a good rule of thumb. I don't want to calculate with data points. What's the point of even graphing all of the data if I'm just going to calculate with these two points? So no one should calculate with the numbers that you see over on that chalkboard over there if you're a person up there that you saw on the chalkboard a moment ago. All we would need to do is collect two data points and then you know find the slope between them. You can draw a line between two points, right? So what's better than calculating the slope between any two data points is, is calculating the slope of this line, which is more accurate than any data point. That's the idea now. If I look, if I scour my line, I can find a really good point right here. And why is that a really good point? This point is good because it's on my best fit line and it's perfectly intersecting the gridding of the graph where I can read off the X coordinate is 0 0.08. It was just before my 0.1. See, it's like lines up with this one. And it's just above this one. So remember this one went up by 0.1. So it's 1.1. Now here's where all of our answers change. It just so happens that on my line, that's a coordinate that intersects my best fit line. But it's, it's highly unlikely that that's the case for you. 
Okay, you have to now do what I'm doing and find the good points for yourself. So you, you scour the line, you say, hey, that one's pretty good there, right? It's almost intersecting the gridding of the graph right there. I'm gonna kind of find like the best one. So I'm gonna choose actually this one right here. And do what I'm doing and circle them for me. So it distinguishes the crosses are my data points. The circles are the points I chose to calculate the slope with. And I can read off my graph that the coordinates of this is 0.28 and 2.6. So see how I didn't collect this data. I never dropped from 2.6 meters. I never dropped from 1.1 meters. But if I did, I would expect these would be my time squared. Okay. Please don't just copy these coordinates into your notebook thinking like this is what's correct if I copy what Dr. Schleich is doing. It's only correct if, if coincidentally your best fit line also intersects these points which is, again, very highly unlikely. So even though it's the same data we've collected, we've done this lab together, this is the point where all of our answers will diverge. We all draw our own best fit line. We all will find slightly different points. And it's, it's possible that, you know, like I said, by coincidence, that, that that's, you know, could be true. All right, so now the slope calculation. All right, so the exciting part isn't dropping, you know, the ball. It's it's this part right here, the moment of truth. All right, don't forget the difference in the y's, which is the second coordinate, in this case, our heights, over the difference in the x's, which in this case is our t squared. So the calculation for slope, and show you're working very clearly for me, please. The slope will be 2.6 minus 1.1. That's my numerator, this number minus this number. Also, Try to choose points like I've done that are far apart from each other. Okay. Um, try not to find two points that are really close in. If those are the only points you can find, okay. But it's, again, it's better to find points that are far away from each other. 0.28 minus 0.08. That's kind of nice. So just be 0.2. Do that in my head. 2.6 minus 1.1. I should also be able to do in my head, right? That's 1.5. 1.5 over 0.2 gives me a slope of 7.5, which remember the, the analysis is because I plotted H versus T squared, my whole experiment is based on this theory that this is the height related to the time squared for something to fall in a gravity field of a given strength G. So my slope is equal to this term, right? Y equals MX. My slope is equal to one half G. So I take 7.5 equals one half G. And this is what you're trying to get to in science. You're trying to see how one quantity varies against another one and then figure something out about nature. Okay, now I know how strong gravity is. This number comes from empirical data that I collected. I dropped things, I timed it, and I know that the slope of how H varies to give me T squared is this. Theory suggests it should be equal to one half the gravity field strength. So by doubling both sides, I get this answer. I remember what I said, knowing that this steep line gives me an answer of 15, 
I could retroactively say, well, you know, that was way too steep of a line. I mean, look at this point down here. I should have, I should have made this my best fit line, right? And it will be a shallower line if I commit to that. And then I might get an answer closer to the known 9.8. So, so if you want to like, you know, use your best judgment, and which is really what I did. I tried to say like, okay, you know, my best judgment, this is my, my best fit line. But look, I get an answer that's way too high. But not too bad, honestly. Like 9.8 is the known gravity field and, and I get 15. I crash land on a mysterious planet and I drop a tennis ball a few times, do a little bit of math and I'm like, okay, you know, within what percent are we of the known field strength? So I think we need to do a percent difference calculation. We need to say 15 minus 9.8 over 9.8. Well, let's compare it actually to 15. So here's what I would base my grade on, what grade I would earn. So this is a percent difference between what I calculated and what I know to be true. So I take my calculated value 15 minus the known value 9.8. So the difference, I'm off by 5.2. But I'm going to compare that to the answer that I got, which means my answer is 34% off. If it were 0% off, it mean I would have got 9.8. So zero is actually 100%. So a 34 is actually a, what, a 64, 65%? So I would get a 65D on this lab. Not too bad. It's like all that for a D? Well, it's a fair way of doing it. No. Um, you know, to be within 30%, you know, of the, of the answer with the way that we did this lab, I think that's pretty good. But it you know, wouldn't be fair to say, okay, now your grade based on the 65D. Because it's very possible to be, you know, um, more than 100% off from this answer. All right, so there you go. 15 meters per second squared on this here planet.